speaking of the ordinance committee we have item number thirty five which is to request a report from the ordinance committee regarding amendments to the subdivision ordinance relating to dedications of land to nonprofit organizations and relating to recreational open space requirements and take any necessary actions and i would ask for a report from councillor masterton who is chairman of the ordinance committee uh, this this particular section of the ordinance comes under the general standards of subdivision design and we are referring to section 16-3-1 subparagraphs O and Q of the subdivision ordinance. Um, subparagraph O uh, deals with preserving in a subdivision whenever practical natural features such as watercourses or bodies, existing trees, marshes, swamps, or other areas identified on the official wetlands map, open space, scenic features, which if preserved would add to the attractiveness of the subdivision. The planning board may require the subdivider to dedicate such features to joint ownership and management by the owners of the uh, individual lots in the subdivision, or in other words, by an association. In lieu of dedication to a homeowner's association or a condominium association, the planning board may accept dedication to the town itself or an appropriate third party group or organization and the present language uh, continues, such as the Cape Elizabeth Land Trust. What we have done in this amendment to subparagraph O is that we have added non-profit to the third party group or organization. And we have deleted, we propose to delete, such as the Cape Elizabeth Land Trust. Uh, we are doing the latter because there may be options other than the um, Cape Elizabeth Land Trust to which uh, uh, open land could be dedicated. So we don't want to just confine our options to the land trust. And then we have added nonprofit to the third party group. So that's not any third party group, it's a nonprofit one that we're talking about. Uh, Subparagraph Q uh, goes on to require the subdivider to set aside up to 10% of the total area of the subdivision for recreation or open space for the landowners in the subdivision or to pay a fee established by the town council and based on <coughs> current assessed value of the land. This fee would be for acquisition by the town for active or passive recreational purposes. This amendment that we are proposing uh, just clarifies that this provision of subparagraph Q is in addition to the requirements set forth in subparagraph O, the setting aside um, of uh, specific unique areas in the subdivision uh, to be owned jointly by the homeowners association or the nonprofit third party group. So the two tie in together. And uh, at this time, uh, Mr. Chairman, I would like to move that we post um, this ordinance amendment to Wednesday, October 12, at 7.30 p.m., which would be the next meeting of the council. Second okay, It's been moved and seconded to post this for public hearing at our next town council me meeting, which is Wednesday, October 12. Now, is there any uh, discussion from the citizens that we'd like to have on this? subject on this amendment. Seeing none, I would then ask if my fellow councillors have any discussion on this amendment. Council Jordan. I have a comment and I'm going to save it for the public hearing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's 
It's been moved and seconded, and I see no further discussion, so I would like to take a vote. All those in favor of the motion, as presented? Any opposed? No, so it passes unanimously and will be set for public hearing October 12th. Moving on to item number 36, which is to consider a report from the Ordinance Committee relating to a time limit for zoning variance and take any necessary action. Councilor Masterton, Chairman of the Ordinance Committee, once again. Um, this proposal originated with the uh, Board of Zoning Appeals, which uh, a Councillor Coggershall chaired at the time. Uh, it was subsequently reviewed and approved by the Planning Board, and um, the only real addition that the Ordinance Committee made to the proposed amendments was to establish an effective date of January 1, 1989. And we are talking here about section 19-4-7 of the Zoning Ordinance, Jurisdiction of Board of Zoning Appeals. And in brief, uh, what the amendment does is that it requires that a recipient of a variance under the zoning ordinance, uh, record a, a certificate of variance um, at the Cumberland County Registry of Deeds within 30 days so that there's a notification on the deed that a variance has been granted by the Zoning Board of Appeals. And this is in conformity with state law. And secondly, that rights to um, take advantage of the, of the variance expire after one year has elapsed from the granting of the variance um, if the construction is not substantially completed. Uh, this is effective for all variances approved after January 1, 1989. So with that, I'd like to move that we um, post this public hearing on October 12th at 7.30 p.m. Second. It's been moved and seconded to post for public hearing October 12th, 1988, which is our next uh, town council meeting. Is there any discussion either from the public or my fellow councilors on this? The only question I had, Councilor Masterton, was it said that um, it shall be determined that if it is not substantially completed within one year. Who makes the determination on substantially completed? Is that the, uh, Jerry Daigle? Code Enforcement Office. Mm -hmm. The building. And we are advised, we discussed this in the Ordinance Committee, and we are advised that he knows perfectly well what substantially completed means, and perhaps the night of the hearing he'll be here to outline that. Okay. We're talking about a structure. Mm -hmm. So Ernie McVeigh, our, our co code enforcement officer, would be. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any further discussion? If none, I would ask for a vote. All those in favor of the motion as presented? Okay. Any opposed? No? So it passes unanimously. Councilor Masterton is doing an outstanding job, don't you think? Let's give her another chance because the <laughs> next, the next item is to consider a report from the Ordinance Committee regarding the Town Ways Ordinance and take any necessary action. Now, uh, we do have a correction that should be made before this is posted to public hearing. I was advised by the town manager. These pages are not numbered, or I guess they are, but the numbers have been cut off. But if you count one, two, three, to the fourth page, Section 1736, backfilling, line 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, strike the period after compactors. You've already done it. Very good. Thank goodness someone besides me picked up on that. <laughs> I <laughs> must apologize that that escaped. No apologies Tom necessary, Andrew, believe very me. very disappointed to me. Apologies. <laughs> okay, now, briefly, what we are talking about. Chapter 17 of the ordinance, town ways. 
and section 1711 uh, defines public road and adequate site distance. Section 17.2, uh, there is a change. Entrance permits are required on all public roads, not just uh, uh, federal highways, uh, but and, and these permits are to be issued by the Public Works Director, not the Town Council. Also under Section 17.2, we do away with uh, uh, the required raised separations between multiple, multiple driveways. Uh, these may be required, however, by the Planning Board uh, when they're considering a subdivision, if it's appropriate. Section 17.3, uh, we have standards for excavation of streets and utility installations, which is new. Uh, section 17.5, we have a regulation on heavy loads and penalties for violating those regulations. And finally, minor changes throughout the ordinance that are merely housekeeping in nature. So with that, I will move to post this amendment to public hearing on October 12th at 7.30 p.m. I'll second. So moved and seconded to post this, these amendments to the public hearing of October 12th, 1988, our next town council meeting. Any further discussion on these? Councilor Greenlaw. I went through this and found a number of sections where I have either questions or corrections to make. Now on my page three, my number at the bottom, numerically, at the top of page three, it's section 17.2.4, ease drainage. I'm wondering if we're in the four places that refers to highway, if that needs to be changed to road to be consistent with previous changes. In the one, two, three, four, the fifth line at the end of the fifth line. Yes. Good. Mm, okay, the sixth line, line it's in there. The eighth line and the last line. Wherever a highway or highway is. Is they different? Mm. Road, you want to use road? That would be consistent. Mm -hmm. um, on page four, my, again, number page four. Article 3, Section 17.3.1, Section A, under that, in the last sentence, the completed application shall also provide the name of location to be excavated, the beginning date of the proposed work, the completion date, the name of property owner for which work is being done. I'm wondering if which <laughs> or whom we had this discussion during break about proper grammar. I'm not sure which is proper there or whom is better. I agree. Whom um, sounds better. I don't know where my teachers were when we played. <laughs> <laughs> they corrected me two or three times. <laughs> well, I had the leisure of doing this <laughs> in a quiet setting. On the next page, I have a question. This is section 17.3.2, excavation. In the next to last line, I'll read the whole, the last sentence. Temporary exceptions may be made only by the fire chief and only when another means of access is not available. I'm wondering what kind of discussion there may have been pertaining to the police chief being named as well as or instead of the fire chief. I think, uh, I think our concern I don't remember any particular discussion on this point, but we are talking about excavations in roadways, and I, we do have gas mains, sewer pipes, where explosions might be involved. Michael, do you have anything to add to that? It, there's no magic to it. It's uh, you know, it could be both. It, it, it was just. Uh, listed as one. I think the reason it was fire chief rather than police chief is because you can get a police cruiser through a whole lot of places where you can't get a fire truck through. Okay. Yeah, I was just curious on that one. 
That's the reason. That's it. That's why they use so five can get a fire truck of a larger vehicle. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Continuing down the same page, um, section 1735, pavement breaking and sidewalks. In the t discussion about concrete sidewalks, all cuts shall be made from the nearest joint or score line, et cetera. I see no words there requiring a new sub base to be put in when that, if those sidewalks are replaced. That is something you need is a new sub base if you're going to be replacing sidewalks. I don't have verbiage to put in there, so I didn't get that done. Another concern is that we don't mention here bituminous sidewalks, which I believe we have more of than we have concrete sidewalks. Bituminous sidewalks all would be similar language in that you need the saw cut and you need a new sub base, but you wouldn't go to score line. So I would hope that that language could be inserted before this goes to public hearing. If I rattle on, perhaps the manager will come up with <laughs> I doubt it. Getting late. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, yeah, Michael seems so we discussed that a little bit, and uh, backfilling would that take care of it? That takes, it's just because it isn't in 1735, yeah. and it's in 1736. That's why. Yeah. The the purpose of 1735 was to to put a, a specific requirement uh, for yeah. concrete sidewalks above and beyond all others. Uh, you know, the regular work for sidewalks is covered under backfilling. I'm not sure if that answers your concern or not. I don't see any discussion about saw cutting on bituminous sidewalks in 1736. Saw cutting is not required under this proposal. I would recommend that it be required. Seems to me that uh, we are Material, materially fiddling with the language of the proposed amendment and of a proposal like that ought to come at the time of the public hearing. That's fine. Don't you think? Excuse me? We are tampering with the substance here, and it seems to me that the time to do that is after the public hearing. No, no, before. We would, we would, normally when we tamper with substance that we consider it substantial, we'd send it back yeah. to the Ordinance Committee yeah. and, and have them bring it back to us sure. so that we, what we set for the public hearing would be the exact wordage that we all approve of. Rather but than but on the other hand, we often respond to comment mm. in a public hearing That's with right. changes substantive or otherwise. If you pardon the, the pun, you're breaking new ground here. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be glad to reserve my comments for the night of the public hearing. Well, I don't think we should be doing it here in the public sec section. I would session. I would prefer to have it referred back to the ordinance committee and do it in committee. I would I would agree with that as the procedure, because you know any any substance of changes that come from public discussion that we weren't aware of could certainly be adapted that night. But as we're discovering them now, it would seem based on precedent we'd send it back to the ordinance committee if if we feel that this does meet substantive changes. I'm a little lost on the saw cuts, to tell you the honest and goodness <laughs> truth. <laughs> but uh, I will trust you. Well, yes, Bill and Councilor I are Jordan. too good on it either, are we, Bill? Oh, what do you mean, cut? Saw cuts. We're really saw not cut. up on that. Oh, I don't know. It depends on this word of concrete. Uh, Michael, just a question to the manager is, are we creating something here as far as a contractor or uh, any utility company that they got to have a saw when they, a lot of times in the macadam roads and what have you, or sidewalks, they just use a chisel and, you know, and get a line with an air hammer to get their line with. But where, with this, we're requiring them to have a saw or any with it. That's, that's correct. I, you know, I think it was the Department of Public Works failing that, uh, you know, it, it's, a, it's a lot wiser to go out and get a saw and have a nice clean cut and have a nice clean fill uh, than, than to go in with, with a big uh, backhoe and create a mess and that uh, you're far preferable to have a nice neat cut and a nice neat hole filled. And it's very similar to 
uh, in fact, identical to requirements in other communities. This is not unusual and, and not uh, a difficult standard. So are they going to be made aware that we are going to require saw cuts from now on? Yes. Once this is passed? Yes. Uh, you know, there's a number of requirements in here that uh, very obviously we will have to make uh, everyone in the contracting field aware of. Okay. Councilor Greenlaw, would you like to go through <laughs> what I see as our further changes that you have? <laughs> I don't mean to peek at your notes, but I can see there's more coming. Um, on page six, this is a question. I don't know if it needs to be made more explicit in the wording. It's section 1738, restoration of surface and street. Um, my, the town at its option may allow the individual and or utility to permanently resurface that portion of the street surface, surface damaged by the excavation. My question is, when would that decision be made in the process? Do you wait until after you see what they've done, or do you do it before they start? Or no, it's at the beginning. You know, for example, over on uh, yeah. Sawyer Road, or, mm -hmm. you know, the contract is over there, and, you know, that would be part of the job is for them to, to do that, you know. There, there are certain times when you go in and you just, you've got to have it done right away and you want to have it done right. You know, but like, for example, Route 77. And at that point, you know, we would work with the contractor to arrange that the, the permanent uh, is done, particularly, you know, when there has been, we're satisfied that, that it is a utility or whatever that, usually, that always follows the standards for backfilling. We don't need to be too concerned about settlement. I'm comfortable with the wording that I was just hearing. Mr. Chairman, that's the end of my... Okay, no, thank you very much. Thank you for your input. I would, I would then ask, again, if we could get a consensus on do we feel these are substantive enough changes to warrant uh, sending them back to the Ordinance Committee or setting them as amended here? And I guess we really haven't really refined all the wording of some of the amendments, so it's probably not appropriate for us to do it here to set to a public hearing. Any comments on Councilor Cogshell? Did you, did you have... Oh, I... I See, I'm so used to that with Billy, I can tell when he snuggles on up, he's ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were doing the same. My wife gives me alcohol because I don't speak in the mic. <laughs> <laughs> Chairman, yes. I think all you need to do in section 17.3.5, if you want to do that, is change the word concrete to on all sidewalks. That would, you know, what is there other than bituminous and, and uh, bituminous concrete? It, in fact, bituminous only, is a form of concrete. Only on concrete sidewalks where you have sections hmm. do you have joints and score, um, score lines. You don't have a joint in a bitumen. You've got to have something separate, I think, for bitumen. I think that's appropriate no, if you're calling out concrete. Mr. Chairman, I have lost track of where we are. I made a motion, did I not, to post it to public hearing? Mm -hmm. Uh, can I withdraw that motion? If the seconder would, would withdraw. Would you second? No, I second. Yeah. Would you agree? Sure. And um, I'll replace that motion with sending this back to the Ordinance Committee for the few uh, changes, minor and major, that have been so ably presented by Councilor Brown. If I may. Council Jordan. I just want to, just want to, I don't understand why it's going to go back to the audits committee if we agree with these changes as long as it is posted with the changes to the public, 
Why does it have to go back to the ordinance committee? Because some felt that the, because we want to be so careful with the wording, as we can see earlier tonight, how careful we must be on the wording of ordinances that we didn't want to do it quickly. Uh, that, that's the only reason for not, that's the only reason in the past we've sent it back to the ordinance committee, so it could be done a little more thought, thoughtfully, deliberatively, rather than uh, making quick decisions here, which could have long-ranging impact. If one feels that the way, Michael certainly has a great ability to draft these fill-in phrases, and that's the decision we have to make now, whether we feel the wording is tight enough and we're comfortable enough, certainly we can set it for the public. And we've run into problems with that in the past. That's why we've sent it back. Okay, but if we agree with these changes, could I ask the town attorney sitting here on the public would like to speak to get his opinion on whether it has to come back to us? There's only one provision that I think that there's any concern about because you just haven't drafted it yet. No one knows exactly what should go in. I don't think that that is a substantive enough change. If it went to public hearing, that would require another hearing. I have given an opinion before. It has to be substantive. I think if you added a provision for how you cut bituminous, no one would say that you'd have to have a second public hearing because that was a substantive change. So I don't think it really matters. You know, I mean, I'm not that concerned if you add one 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 sentence that night and between now and then somebody drafts it and delegated and you add it that night. I don't I don't have a problem with legally. Okay. I mean uh, <laughs> Mr. Manager. Yeah, just I, I sense this may go to public hearing, so Jane and I were kicking something back and forth here. We better mention it just in case it doesn't go back to the ordinance committee. On that same page that you were discussing that it's uh, 1732, which is that paragraph at the top there. In the last sentence of that section, the word not should be deleted. That's a uh, typographical error. My faith in this ordinance is still not eroding, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, it, but, but it's getting to that point. <laughs> uh, well, there was no yeah. motion on the floor presently. Would someone care to make one? I, even if it was a motion that was earlier made and withdrawn, that would be acceptable. I'll move that we set this to a public hearing on October 12 at 7.35. Yeah. And any changes will be drafted by the manager and then sent to us as, as soon as possible so that we could have our input? Is and this... Be posted with a change. Reviewed by the town attorney. Yes. Okay, discussion. Uh, was that motion I, seconded, by the way? Yes. Seconded. Okay, I'd like well, to have discussion. Before we vote on, on it, I would just like to ask a question as to the procedure that we should follow in introducing these changes the night of the public hearing. You'll, you'll throw this copy away and use a copy of it's been redrafted. Yeah, but we've got. What about the bituminous sidewalk? It was my understanding that Tom said you you could add these changes the night of the public hearing. Isn't that what I heard you to say? I think I, what I would think is you post it as it has been corrected this evening, the exception of one sentence. And that night, when it's reviewed in the crown of somebody's office, and you write down what that one sentence is and about doing you make that that night. That but who does it, Tom? One of the council members would make that motion. The audience committee, after the public hearing, would I don't think the committee would be involved, but if one of the council members would say, I recommend that we make that one change. And I think with that change, we can pass that evening. I don't think what I'm saying is we need another public hearing after that. It's only for one sentence of that nature. Would the public still be able to comment after that change was made? Because that would usually be done after the close of the public hearing. Right, which means we wouldn't have had a chance to really vote on it, because that, that would be the first thing. Yeah, yeah someone, someone does, sure, point someone point does summarize it. Okay, okay. Part of the introductory remarks regarding the public hearing, it can be applied then. Okay. All those in favor of the motion, which is to uh, set it for public hearing October 12, 1988, any opposed? It passes unanimously seven to zero.
We move to sec uh, item number 38, which is to consider a report from the Ordinance Committee regarding disturbing the peace and taking any necessary action. Councilor Masterton. Um, this um, this uh, change is to the noise ordinance. And, um, uh, well, actually, it's the miscellaneous offenses ordinance. And these two changes have to do with noise, section 12-1-1A is completely rewritten. It amends archaic language. It exempts agricultural activities, school-sponsored events, fireworks, or approved concerts. And B um, deals with construction noise, which is a new element. We have never had anything like that in the noise ordinance. Um, prohibiting uh, uh, the construction noise between 10 p.m. and 7 a.m. in the morning, except in an emergency or in an act of God, which is a sort of emergency. And with that, I, I will post this to public hearing on October 12th at 7.30. It's been moved and seconded to post this matter to public hearing October 12th, 1988. Is there any further discussion on this, on these changes to this proposed ordinance? Seeing none, I would ask for a vote on the motion. All those in favor? Any opposed? Passes 7 to 0 to set this to public hearing. And our thanks go out to the Chairman of the Ordinance Committee and her hardworking committee for these reports. Item number 39 is to consider a report from the town manager regarding submitting roadway and bikeway projects to PACs and take any necessary action. I would ask if the manager could perhaps explain to the general audience here and at home PACs and TIPs, which is another phrase that we will come across later. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. PACS is the Portland Area Comprehensive Transit Study, which is essentially the regional transportation planning agency. Uh, the transportation, the, t the TIP is the Transportation Improvement Program. I think that's fairly self-explanatory. What, what they've done is they, asked, they sent us a letter in August asking what our priorities might be uh, for inclusion in their next uh, Transportation Improvement Program. They're actually asking for projects for the next four years, so we're talking 1990, 1991, 1992, and 1993. So we really have to uh, think forward uh, quite a bit. The, there's only going to be about $1.2 million available in the region. Uh, so any projects we submit stack up against uh, some very competitive proposals in uh, very heavily traveled areas, for example, around the main mall uh, and in all the communities of the region. Uh, at the PACS meeting last week, we discussed what they use for uh, high priority items and uh, what the rating system consists of. Essentially, anything will score well, provided there have been a lot of accidents in that area. And it's divided by accidents versus the, the travel. So, you know, so there, there is a factor in there of, of how, much, how many vehicles per day uh, go on that particular road. Uh, beyond that, there, there are other considerations, road, road surface uh, and capacity itself, the capacity of the road. So with that said, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not, I think, you know, when we list these projects, when we want to send them, uh, folks watching shouldn't anticipate that they're going to be undertaken tomorrow. Uh, we are talking the next four years, and it is a very, it is a highly competitive process. Uh, the, the other factor I should mention is that there are really two ways of getting some of these projects done, or three ways. Uh, one is through uh, the main Department of Transportation, directly through the division office in Scarborough. A second way is through PACs, and a third way is simply local funding uh, to uh, decide you're going to fund it 100%. And, uh, at that point, they would probably consider it to be uh, one of their priorities. Uh, I have spoken with Merritt Brackett, the division engineer uh, for Maine Department of Transportation in Scarborough, and he has indicated that a number of the resurfacing projects here uh, do not need to go through PACs and uh, would in will in fact be done next year. Uh, he, he's now preparing, quote, a program uh, for next year, 
uh, with, and he expects the program to come into the area of Cape Elizabeth, Scarborough, and South Portland. Time will tell. Uh, you know, I, I, I don't want to take any chances of taking them off the list. Uh, there was uh, some problems a few years ago, and even if they don't need to go through PACs, I'd at least like to send them to PACs and you know, not take the chance that they'll get lost in the bureaucracy. Uh, the projects essentially are ones that have been discussed by the council uh, for a long time over the years. Uh, the first is a shore road bikeway from approximately Fort Williams Park uh, to up here at the corner at Route 77. A second is to finish the Route 77 bikeway, which is uh, complete except for the section from uh, the Spurwing Church to the new bridge in Scarborough. The third project, the resurfacing of uh, the strip on Route 77. I think everyone knows where the strip is. Next, uh, that is one that Mr. Brackett has indicated uh, looks good in his department for next year. The fourth is to resurface Spurwink Avenue from the Perpudic Club uh, up to uh, the Spurwink Church. A fifth project would be to resurface those sections of Two Lights Road, uh, which, which are not in the urban compact areas. If anyone notices, you see those urban compact signs. Uh, we're responsible for inside the urban compact. The MDOT is responsible for outside. A sixth is the intersection we, uh, Bill Jordan mentioned earlier, uh, where Sprague Corporation recently cut out some brush, the intersection of Spurling Church, try to get that straightened away. Uh, an additional project would be replacement of the culvert and uh, fixing the grade uh, shore road at Pond Cove, uh, just down beyond, beyond uh, Old Colony Lane between there and uh, Lawson Road. A sixth project uh, would be the signalization of uh, the intersection out here by Cumberland Farms and Jonesies and uh, Casco Bank and Balfour's. And uh, the final project would be the possibility of signalization of the Spurwing Avenue Route 77 intersection at the intersection down this end of town as opposed to the Spurwing 77 intersection at the other end of town. Thank you for that explanation, Councilor Amaro. You're actually proposing traffic lights? <laughs> you know, I. <laughs> Code word, folks, was signalization. <laughs> Interpretation, traffic lights. Yeah, the first two in the town's history. Go ahead. I emphasized at the very beginning that we're not talking just 1988. We're talking 1990, 1991, 1992, and 1993. And... Have you actually convinced the traffic lights at this point, except in the summer? It's going to slow traffic down. Yeah. What, what, the rest of the year. Yes. I, I think at this point, you know, day in and day out, we don't need traffic lights. What we I think what we essentially need, particularly at this intersection down here, the, the closest one right around the corner, is a traffic light that would be on in the morning and that would go on blinking during the day, that would be on uh, on Sundays during the summer, and that would be on uh, around the time school gets out. It could be very, very difficult to get across that intersection uh, at this point. We see more and more traffic there every year. You know, I don't see it happening in 1988 or 1989, but I think, you know, unless we, we begin to think of uh, 1992, uh, that, w that we're not being too uh, far-sighted. Furthermore, there would be some local funds involved in that, and, uh, you know, if it should happen three or four years down the road, the town council would make the judgment at that point whether or not it was a high enough priority to, to put in the local funds. But I would, I would think the council would much want to keep the option open for four years from now rather than to foreclose it at this point. I don't like traffic lights either. Yes, Councilor Cogshaw. Um, number one on your list is the Shore Road Bikeway, which has a lot of public support and interest and, and council support. My question to you is, if it's included in the PAC's proposal and they do grant us the money for the bikeway, are we going to be locked into their design and recommendation, or are we going to be able to have what we have sometimes discussed as something that's much more aesthetic and having a bike path on one side of the road? Are we going to be committed to a bike path on both sides, which will essentially destroy the aesthetics of the area? That's, a, that's an excellent question. Uh, I know many people share your concern. Uh, I don't. I don't know the answer to that. You know. Again, I'm. You know. I, I'm. I'm really concerned. You know. My sense is that requires the standards require a bikeway on both sides of the road. The council has not discussed that. Uh, it just it's not discussed that favorably. 
having one on both sides of the road. Right. Uh, you know, I, I think it's a very legitimate concern. It's perhaps, you know, it's something you, you might not want to send in that direction. Uh, but, you know, at the same time, you, you are foreclosing the possibility of, uh, of outside funds. But sometimes the outside funds can cost up double. What, what it is to do by the We can always refuse outside funds but whose guidelines we don't want to live under, number one. And also, uh, from our former discussions, it's not likely that DOT is going to go for the bike way, nor is PACS. So are you saying that even though we submit this, we may move ahead on our own? Sure. It, you know, it, if it's a council priority, I would strongly urge you to move ahead on your own outside of tax uh, on that project being in a position. But not to, to take it off the list. I don't see any okay. harm in having it on the list. I don't either. Michael, I was going to ask you if uh, just having these resurfacing job, jobs on this tax list spurs DOT to move. I was reading between the lines. Yeah, when was, what I did is I, I sent a draft of this back in August to, to Murray Brackett, you know, just as a draft so that he could review it. And I think it's already served that purpose as an as a indication to him that uh, it is something. You know, we've, uh, we've talked about for a long time. Jane Amaro went over there. I mm -hmm. uh, spoke with Murray about a year or so ago uh, with Bob Malley and myself. and. Uh, he certainly has gotten the message that, some, that Cape Elizabeth is looking for something to be done here about the, the very poor condition of the uh, he state didn't maintained roads. He did mention the uh, Palm Cove situation, did he? In the he most recent research. conversation, no. Oh, uh, yes, Councilor. Probably figures he's got 100 years. Councilor Jordan. You, you have the shore road bikeway number one number seven is to fix a culvert down by Pond Cove. I would hope they'd fix the culvert before they build a bikeway so they wouldn't have to come back and tack the bikeway and redo it. I, I think those two projects I want to be in reverse or closer together. Do one and probably two things at the same time. Is there a heavy uh, prioritization where one obviously means this is number one on our hit parade, or, or is there not that significance behind the priority of your numbers? Pax has its own rating system and will we'll rate them regardless of what the town's priorities are. However, they will not rate any project unless the town submits it. Okay. But the, the so, so you think it's clear to them that it's not implicit that it's necessarily in descending order of importance? Even if it was or wasn't, it wouldn't make, it wouldn't any, make difference. any difference. Yeah. Okay. Yes, Council Greenlaw. I want to make sure I understand what the procedure is or can be after this list is submitted that we're submitting the list to PACs if we receive funding from them for a project but we are uncomfortable with the guidelines and stipulations they attach to that funding. We may refuse the funding. For any project involving local funding, yes. The projects that may not involve local funding are the resurfacing projects, but just simply resurfacing. If they go beyond resurfacing and it becomes an actual project, it comes back to the town council. They, they ask if you want to hold a public hearing, and there's a, there's a very formal process. And we would have, have a chance with the resurfacing projects to coordinate those with town resurfacing work on other, I'm specifically thinking of the Two Lights Road. Yes, we would. Section. We would. And also, it, it, what will probably happen on Two Lights Road is after they resurface that we will own it. Uh, they will turn it back to us for maintenance. We'll have to do it afterwards. Turn it back to us afterwards. You can't well, explain it back. Yeah, except the problem with that is we pick up the drainage problem uh, by uh, the strawberry field. Do we want to say something more than resurfacing on that road, then, if we're going to inherit a problem? Yeah. They're going to inherit a good problem down there by the old tree. Mm -hmm. Shall we request that they address the drainage situation? Mm -hmm. Sure. Certainly. I'll add that to the list. Of Can it be no added to what ties in with the resurfacing? 
Yes. Not just a number, another number, but part of that number. Any other comments regarding this, this item? I wish to say as a counselor I'm constantly learning things and I now know that there is longitudinal cracking, latitudinal cracking, and alligator cracking. So that's, that's what is alligator cracking? I would just like big alligator it's okay. in the middle of the road. Mm -hmm. usually. We have a good sampling of all three about town now that I think it's of it. It's all crisscrossed. Mr. Chairman, I would just like to say one thing. I would hope that we would continue along with PACs instead of trying to make a decision of what they want now, that we wait and see what they have to say, we may be in agreement with their decision if we have some input with it. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the funds would be greatly appreciated in my pocketbook. Okay. Is there, yes, Councilor Amor. Uh, just one comment. Uh, I'd like to see us at some time discuss uh, policy with research I'm interested when we resurface the road that we provide a white line on the edges of the road and with some area, not a true bike way, but some place so that people jogging and using the road for other than um, vehicle traffic have some place to, go, to be other than in the path of the automobile. That was discussed at budget time with the public works director why we didn't do more roads with a white line on the outside. Also, it's very, it's very helpful on real foggy nights. That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so maybe if we could add that, if everybody is in agreement, uh, to these resurfacing applications. Does that in the That's an added part. feature mm -hmm. that we um, are asking. Did they give the striping? Stay the state does, yeah. I, yeah. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll relay that to Merritt, but PACS wouldn't get into a detail of that okay, level, but right. I will relay that. Do you want to put a specific width on the outside of the white line? Well, I think it depends on the road, yeah. so we can do that. They have to go by the center line to the outside, and you take what's left is the way it's done. Because you really have to have a certain width row between the lines. Any further discussion on this? If not, we still don't have a motion. I would like to entertain a motion. I'll move these be submitted as per our discussion and amendments. Second. Been moved and seconded to be have the manager submit these per our discussion and amendments. All those in favor of the motion? Any opposed? None. It's unanimously passed. Very good. I thought Billy for sure would say that wise cracking was another kind of cracking that he'd seen too much of, <laughs> too much of around here, but he, did, he missed his beat on that one. <laughs> Item number 40 is a proclamation which has come forward from the fire chief, which I will now read, and uh, if we should adopt this, that would be the motion that would be in order. The proclamation reads that whereas fire in the home disproportionately strikes the very young and very old and majority of home fire deaths occur at night when victims are typically asleep and whereas early warning of fire is essential to life safety and minimal fire loss and smoke detectors can be an important part of this early warning and whereas the steps to ensure that smoke detectors work properly regular testing replacing batteries and cleaning can be carried out easily and whereas Cape Elizabeth Fire Department is dedicated to the safety of life and property of its protected citizens from the devastating effects of fire and recognize the value of proper planning and preparedness before fire strikes. Now, therefore, we, the Cape Elizabeth Town Council, do hereby proclaim the week of October 9th through the 15th as Fire Prevention Week. This week commemorates the Great Chicago Fire of 1871, in which 250 persons were killed, 100,000 were left homeless, and more than 17,400 buildings were destroyed. We call upon the people of Cape Elizabeth to participate in activities at home, at work, and school, and to do as fire prevention theme for 1988 suggests, a sound you can live with, test your smoke detector. This is dated May 12th, uh, September, I'm sorry, September 12th, 1988 at Cape Elizabeth, Maine. 12th day of September. I move we adopt this proclamation. Second motion, with one comment. Council Jordan. I would just like, I agree with this 100%, but I would just like to say that we put a sign in front of public safety building for public safety information. And all I see is the announcement of this is going to take place and that's going to take place. To me, this is a time of year 
that people should be checking their smoke detector batteries and what have you and cleaning their chimneys and getting ready for fall. And to me, that's what should be on the sign. Could that message be duly uh, given to the fire chief? The, the message uh, has been given to the fire department and they, they do try to schedule those in. Uh, it is very much in demand for community activities as well. And uh, they're, they're always looking for a balance. What's been there the most lately, for the last month? It's, it's something about the community services program, I believe. Okay, thank you. Anyone? Council just, Council? just one point, I think proclamations uh, ought not to have typographical errors. I'd hate to have this transposed and then put out for public display in the last line. Uh, it does say a sound you can life with. Uh, to and I certainly wasn't going to read that, so you're absolutely <laughs> right, though. I did my own amending of that sentence. Very good. It will go up typographically I, you know, correct. I, that may be that correct. Uh, I think I think it is because they're trying to emphasize life, and it, it you notice it more. I, I I don't know that, but we will check it. And I would not be surprised if if that is in fact the slogan. You know, the, the slogan is try to you, you obviously recognize it when you read it. As, as I, I, opposed to well, catch you. I would question what sloganeer would come up with, with that one, but. Let's, you will check into that, nonetheless. We will. We will, <laughs> we will, we will a woman has a second a job, day. undoubtedly. So, may, may I pass this around with the understanding we'll correct that uh, yeah. should the need arise as well as whiten out the item number? I'm just going to ask a question if you want us to sign to it so we can post the right one. We'll. Uh, would it be reasonable <laughs> by. Uh, by any uh, extra effort to perhaps uh, have this in the Cape Courier, the proclamation? It'll be there. It, it would be reasonable if and the Cape Courier editors would be amenable. If we could get a, a copy to be mm -hmm. uh, published in if, if the you know, If, you know, that is an independent publication, and, uh, you know, while certainly we, we can request, uh, you know, if the council, if they say no, are you saying you want us to uh, obtain advertising space? No, I think we should request it of the editors. Okay. No problem. And they can then make the editorial decision yeah. with independence from the council. It could always be a letter to the editor. I'm not writing any more of those. But uh, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh, why did, I, why did I do that? Uh, okay. All those in favor of the proclamation, <laughs> life or live, uh, Raise your hand. Thank you. Any, any opposed? None. So it passes unanimously that we've proclaimed that as Fire Prevention Week, October 9th through the 15th. Uh, our last item this evening is item 41 to consider the 1988-89 ballot for election of Maine Municipal Association officers and the voting delegate credentials for the MMA annual meeting and taking any necessary action. What we're basically doing here is deciding who is going to represent us and cast the ballot for the officers of the MMA at the uh, annual meeting at Augusta, October 5th through the 7th. The MMA has a meeting every year, and they usually rotate it between Lewiston, Bangor, Augusta, Portland. This year I see it's in Augusta. They have excellent workshops, good speakers that come in, and we have before us the ballot of those that are running. I don't see much opposition, so we normally just cast our vote, and now we just decide as to who's going to, to go. And any, any council that's going can certainly attend that session to cast it. The ballot, if not our manager in the past, has been elected as the uh, representative. Is anyone planning on going would like to cast the ballot? What day do they do this? October 6th. Thursday. Have we received the information yet on this convention? I haven't really. Was, it might have been in the last towns. In the town. Mm. That's not, I didn't find that to be real specific about what was happening a, a given day. And only through a letter um, from MMA to me because I'm a member of the Legislative Policy Committee. Am I aware that I possibly should be there on the 6th? Mm -hmm. I, I was disappointed in the town. Okay. The manager has mentioned he is willing to volunteer if no one else is going. We gratefully accept you. Okay. I'd like to drive down. I received another mailing today that they're having a workshop. I can't, I didn't have time to look at it carefully to which date it is, but it's a workshop on comprehensive planning being sponsored by 
Lincoln Land Institute. A fee of twenty-five dollars for town sessions. That is promising. I think it should also be made note that the town manager's name is on here. He's up for re-election. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. And for a one-year term as an advisory committee member, I applaud his involvement in that capacity. Congratulations, Michael. You haven't been elected yet. Oh, wow. Well. The opposition doesn't look too <laughs> st stiff, namely now. Yeah. So. Well, I don't know. You I seem to be slow oh, in sorry. voting for this. I'm sorry. I <laughs> they could be. Right in name. There could be a groundswell of support for a write in, yes. So, Mr. Chairman. Councilor like, Jordan. Would you like a motion? Yes, I would. Yeah. We recommend the state of Washington. Yes. And appoint the town manager to cast our ballot. That's right. All those in fa uh, second. do we have a second? second? Okay. All those in favor of the motion? Okay. Any opposed? No. So the motion carries unanimously. It is time once again for citizens' discussion of items not on the agenda. Is there any citizen? Are there any citizens that care to step forward? Seeing none, uh, we have. Are there any miscellaneous, miscellaneous items that any councilors would like to bring up? Yes, Councilor Amaral. Uh, just one item. The town is in receipt of a letter from Prof, which just came today. Uh, Prof is a uh, Fort Regional Opportunity Program. Uh, it has a board of 21 uh, representatives, seven from the public sector, seven from the private sector, and seven representing low-income people. Uh, there are five towns represented in the seven-member public sector. Uh, part of this board. And uh, Prof is asking us to appoint a member to that board. It would be replacing uh, a seat uh, held by a representative from the city of Westbrook. Uh, they rotate, rotate the uh, representation amongst the communities in the area. And they would like to hear from us by September 23rd as to whether we want to appoint someone from a group of the state. Does this need to be an elected official? It doesn't have to be, but it is a representative. We have, that person would be representing the public sector. It might be a good idea to have someone either elected or uh, administrated in the public sector. <laughs> the look of fear. <laughs> or administrator, did we hear? Uh, okay. Is there anyone that would, I don't know, th well, this is something are, maybe, go ahead. Uh, <laughs> The uh, board meets the second Wednesday of each month for two to three hours. At what time? In the evening. They didn't say what time. I imagine seven, seven thirty. And each representative is expected to serve on one. Is there anyone here, administrative or elected, that would care to participate? I would put forth the name of Deborah Pisa. Are you running away or are you <laughs> going along? Very good. I'd Great. Good. Excellent. Great. Tremendous. Fine. <laughs> She's now the acting town manager. She's on this board <laughs> and yeah. growing in with her power base. Congratulations. <laughs> Just in Very the town hall, but not at home. <laughs> Any other miscellaneous business to be brought before the council? Well, I have I have a few, but go ahead. I, this National League of Cities deal Just a is the chairman is going to be the uh, voting delegate. You've got to let him know by October 3rd unless we're going to meet before him. By the way, I read this. Mm -hmm. Did I read it correctly? Yes. That was one of the miscellaneous I was okay. going to bring up. I'll let you take care of it. Okay, if, if I'm to be the voting delegate, and thank you all if I am to be, uh, I'd, we'd like to have an, an alternate also. And I was going to propose the, uh, that this become more or less a tradition where the chairman become the voting delegate and the finance committee chair become the alternate. And it's just a tradition we can carry on. 
And Councillor Jordan, if you're not going to attend, maybe you could find someone to alternate for your being an alternate. Well, I think the delegate should be the one to find the alternate to make sure that somebody there is going to be able to vote and represent. Very good. Will, will be done. <laughs> you better find someone, Frank. I will. I will. <laughs> I will see which of you is attending the most workshops and then designate you as the alternate. Uh, let's see. Well, also, I just want to remind everyone that we're having a workshop Monday, September 26th with the Comprehensive Planning Commission. So we all have that penciled into our calendars. Also, is it, would we like to set a time now for a workshop with the school committee? Or would we care to wait till the 26th? Th that is one that, that is there and is certainly ripe for a, a good workshop. We're thinking of having it sometime in October. And as we all have our schedules are very tight, we may want to make the uh, a time right now for such a workshop. Speaking of the school committee, could I give a comment? The time to In this, when they built these temporary classrooms, it was mentioned at the time they were putting it together that maybe they ought to close in around underneath and uh, before they put the lattice work up because it's a little breezy in Cape Elizabeth now and then and once in a while, but I was told they had insulation enough there they didn't worry about it. So they put the lattice work up regardless. So I just want to wonder, was that one in the contract? Did you find out for me, Michael? I did. What? It was in the contract, so they couldn't have it done, or they want to hire somebody later on to do it, because maybe some people around here, those Aroostook County uh, officers, uh, staff on the school board, I mean the school department, should know how cold it gets once yes. in a while. So I would thought they would have had it done. I, I, dis I discussed it with the members of the staff originating from the county, uh, and they indicated that uh, they were going to uh, put some poly uh, up against that during the winter season and use the, the true Arista County way of uh, having snow uh, up against there to, to block the uh, path of snow. I explained we don't get too much snow, but uh, they'll see how it works out and put poly up. They're going to watch it very closely. Well, that's the way they do it in Arista County. Mm -hmm. They put the poly around, a few bales of hay, what have you, but I thought Cape Elizabeth could do a little better than that. <laughs> I would, like to, I would like to propose Monday, October 3rd, or Monday, October 24th, as dates. Is the 24th acceptable to everyone? Okay, so 7.30 p.m. That's Monday. Right. We will have a set agenda, which we'll discuss bef previous to that, which we will all just to, just to uh, get together on that and once again refresh our memories as to what we'd like the agenda to be, so we don't go in just very cold on that. Yes. I've got one or two issues. I appreciate Billy bringing up the situation with that temporary tool construction. I've been sharing that concern. Hope that it will be addressed somewhat. In some of the notes that were included in the packet, there was something about the Spurling Church being hit by lightning. And I have not been observant enough to notice whether or not that structure has lightning rods on it. It has the weather vane on the top, which is grounded. It is. But that would still have. Mm -hmm. I was just concerned about the amount of damage being done and whether or not we need more lightning rods and more grounding for it. Is that something you could look into? I could. I'm, I don't profess to be an expert at it, but I'll, you could find the right I'll find out who understands those things. And there was a request for items for the manager's newsletter. Yeah. I believe. Could we include a comment made hours ago <laughs> by the chairman that citizens are welcome to serve on the Lighthouse 200 committee in that newsletter? Mm -hmm. Any other comments? If not, just before we adjourn, I would like to wish our town manager a very well-deserved and pleasant vacation. He'll be 
leaving the United States for an extended period, hopefully not too extended, but he is going on vacation and, and we say bon voyage, have a good trip. Thanks. We will hold down the fort for you as best we can, along with Deborah, of course. Would anyone care to uh, have a motion to adjourn? It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor? It's unanimous. This adjourns the meeting of the town council. Thank you all. I didn't. I didn't give you an exact itinerary. Did you? <laughs> it could have been Canada. It could have been going to Quebec.